These issues related to health, which has such a direct impact on poverty, is therefore also directly linked on, on how we can achieve peace and progress on a broader agenda. Think about it when viruses travel across the world and government decide to shut down borders. Is that a foreign policy issue? Yes, it is. One thing is to shut down the border, another one is to open it again. Think about it from the perspective of the natural resource which is a virus in order to produce medicines, vaccines and drugs. Who owns it? Who has the intellectual property right to it? Is that a foreign policy issue? Yes, very complex one. So in area after area, issues related to health, related to people's development, is also related to peace and security among nations. And with this objective, I created uh, a network of seven foreign ministers from the following countries, Thailand, Indonesia, South Africa, Senegal, Brazil, France, and Norway. You have all the different continents. To come together with our experts regularly and study how we could make an impact on global health issues and analyze how global imp health impact issues make an impact on us. And I think that has been a wakening up call among foreign ministers and in the whole security environment that these issues are not only for health ministers. And I don't say this to challenge my colleague, the health minister. I say it to underline that if we want to make a difference in health, more than the health minister has to feel responsible for health. It has to be the responsibility also of presidents and prime ministers and finance ministers and even poor foreign ministers to get engaged in it. So I think that this is an issue which is focused on maternal health, is focused on interventions, making those interventions available. I think the experts can talk about it. Again, it's not high tech. It's about proving minimum facilities for women to give birth under minimum uh, supervision in order to be safe. But we also need to put it into an uh, a perspective of women's rights to empower women with the right and opportunity to decide if and when to give birth, to take, give birth with qualified health workers, and to see the investment in the girl child's education as a key to success. All these issues are related. Now, we know that women's health is not always a high priority for poor families. We know that in many cultures, a women's husband and in-laws tend to have a final say on how limited resources should be spent. So therefore, the right to choose and the value of women and their position in the family and society must be recognized and strengthened. This is a broad issue which is not going to change by interventions, but by global focus and discussion. It's also linked into the issue of conflict and war. There is a Security Council resolution of the United Nations on women, conflict and war and conflict, which is focusing on the fate of women in armed conflicts, in refugee settings. And we know that women are more vulnerable, more susceptible for abuse in those settings, and it needs to be addressed. No, almost no peace treaties are signed or negotiated by women. We, in our own foreign ministry, in Norway, try to make a difference in that, in the way we shape our negotiation teams to have a better gender balance. But in general, this resolution 1325, which celebrates 10 years of its anniversary, is focused on how we can raise awareness and include the perspective of both genders into state building, into development, into peace building, so that the whole broad perspective is reflected. Now, uh, there is today, I think, a real moment of opportunity. The Secretary General of the United Nations has a global strategy, which we have worked hard to, to, to help achieve, which is focusing on these health dimensions of the Millennium Development Goals. Child health, maternal health, they are linked. And I think we as a government, our prime responsibility is to work on the implementation of the strategies that have been adopted at the country level, seek better coordination among UN agencies, including this new agency, UN Women, 
which is a specific UN organization for women's affairs. We have to continue to renew what we do on health as a global alliance to be the innovative force in the international concert of efforts. We have to support the WHO, the World Health Organization, in its work of making better accountability for our efforts on health. I am a member of a so-called Commissions on Accountability and Information, chaired by the WHO. And the purpose of this commission is to hold two sides accountable. Those donor states who give money should be held accountable of living up to their pledges. And those who are recipients should be made accountable for the way they spend the money around the plans. And this is something which I think we have to work on. Then we also have to work on innovation. Let me finish on this following note. As I said, this is a matter when it comes to technology and interventions of low tech, not high tech. Uh, and I believe that we as governments could support by incentives making these technologies available. Last week we had a debate um, in my ministry about a specific intervention which could make a difference when it comes to the places of delivery in countries where there is no electricity. Now, one problem there is that there is no light for nurses or health workers or the mother when you are an, a, a, at the moment of delivery. So the idea came up, why don't we use the opportunities that we use every day when we ski? Namely, uh, a light that you can put on your head. Huh? I use this when I ski. It's very easy, you can see, uh, and it's low-tech. And if you could develop it so that it would be chargeable uh, alongside with mobile, mobile phones, it would be a very easy and uh, helpful intervention. And I thought that I would kind of put out a competition here in Trondheim, since we are at the technological capital, to say we would make a prize for the one who would come up with this intervention, which could be used under Indian circumstances. Good idea. Thank you, thank you for applauding that idea. The problem is that we did a search on the internet. <laughs> and we found out that there were four such projects already running. <laughs> All developed in India. Exactly the same idea. You know, great things, great, great minds think alike. <laughs> Cheap and affordable, low tech available, but they have been developed through that mobilization of funds and letting in many, many partners. That is also our challenge, and this is my last remark, because as we move forward on health, in a very broad alliance, many different partners, with the objectives of reducing maternal mortality, reducing the number of women who suffer and die when they give birth, ultimately also limiting the number of children who suffer. We are mobilizing a lot of force to achieve that. The challenge is, do we agree on the course? Do we agree on the values? Do we agree on those other issues which are related to that, related to women's rights, gender equality, and so on? Not necessarily. Because this alliance is so broad, so diverse, so Facebook-related in all its kind of interventions from different sides, that that is a challenge. You cannot vote a manifesto of saying these are the values that all the partners abide to. That is a challenge we need to deal with, and I think this is the right forum to raise it. How do we agree on the roadmap and the values that are needed to underpin our, 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 our effort to make a difference for women and children? Good challenge for you, good challenge for us. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Störe. I think you agree with me that we have an inspiring politician with us in this great course. Please jot down your questions, hold them for after the break. Um, the next speaker is Professor Sir Arul Kumaran, who is originally from Sri Lanka, but left his home country many years ago. He has made himself an extraordinary career clinically, academically, and in professional organizations. He has worked in many countries 
and is now based in the United Kingdom, where he was knighted by the Queen in 2009 for his achievements and for his leadership. He's an obstetrician gynecologist and was appointed professor at St. George University in London in 2001. He has produced numerous scientific publications he also has a year-long affiliation with the International Federation of Gynecologists and Obstetrics, FIGO. Um, it has now been crowned by having been elected president for the coming period. Now, FIGO has already a proud history in terms of bringing up the politically sensitive issues that Mr. Stur also was alluding to, such as adolescent sexual health, unsafe abortion, female genital mutilation, and fistulas complications after, after neglected deliveries. We know it has not been easy, and it's not going to be easy in the future. These fundamentally ethical issues are subject to debate and will continue to do so. FIGO is in a unique position to bring professional clout in a world where there is more and more need to debate these difficult issues.